The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Daryl Martin. All right, folks. How you doing today? I'm your host, Daryl Martin, here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And got ourselves a hump day here. Got wind day going on. And uh, a few things happening in the markets. Uh, Japanese yen there uh, doing some pretty big moves. They announced a, another round of stimulus. So Europe, then the U.S., now Japan, and uh, who knows who's next. <laughs> But uh, the yen uh, got weaker and then uh, got basically stronger against the dollar. The dollar got weaker. Um, and, uh, a lot of things that led to that, of course, being the new home sales came in higher than expected and did pretty well. So that's good uh, for our homeowners out there that are trying to uh, you know, sell homes and everything else. Came in at $4.82 million. And uh, doubt they'll be cutting off Q anytime soon based on that number. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, it uh, did come in at $4.82 million on the existing home sales number. Building permits came in a little higher than expected at point AO versus a point seven nine expectation. And housing starts a little bit lower, but that's more of a lagging indicator anyway. Uh, the big numbers being the existing home sales and the building permits. So what kind of effect did that have on the market? Well, let's check it out. We'll go over and we'll look at the S&P when that announcement came out this morning. We had the first one that came out at, let's see here, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. And uh, on here are the charts. Really, very little reaction. The existing home sales number, however, got a big uh, reaction right there. And we can see that when it came out this morning at 9 o'clock, um, Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, market flew up, pulled back down, pulled back up, and is now sort of chilling out and maybe heading back down at this point. So... Um, you know, decent little move right there. You could have possibly taken advantage of uh, several, you know, possible good entries on that trade. And uh, then, of course, one of the big things when we're looking at new, new home sales or existing home sales or, you know, really existing home sales but building permits, the big thing will be, you know, new home sales and things like that. But copper is always affected on home sales reports. And we can see that we did have some, uh, you know, decent little movements right there on copper pretty fast, um, quick moves. Um, on both the reports, but uh, you know, not not near as much as we'd hoped for. But uh, keep watching the numbers. Again, the more it has to do with new home sales, the more it's going to impact the copper market. But any kind of home sales report, especially things like building permits, and you can say that uh, definitely had the bigger impact out of the two reports for the uh, copper side of things. And uh, of course, there may be a whole new diamond market. Of course, over in Russia, they discovered like you know a quadrillion worth of diamonds. Um, the hard diamonds, not the ones you were, you know the the ladies like to wear on their fingers, but uh, basically the you know, the hard diamonds they use for technology and for industry and things like that. Um, the jump over the uh, previous month is actually the highest in the last two years on the new home sales. So that is a, you know, a good thing. Of course, one uh, month is not a uh, good economy mick, but uh, we'll just uh, keep watching those numbers. They came in below expectations, um, let's see, oh, quite a bit lately. Let's see here. They've been uh, lower than expectations since the last time they exceeded expectations, which was in November of 2011. Um, there's one time in May where they met expectations, um, 4.62 million. But since uh, back in November 2000, so basically December to now, December 2011 to now, they it's not exceeded expectations until this month. So uh, you know, anyway, so that's a nice uptick. We'll see if it uh, becomes a trend or if it's just uh, you know, good month. And, um, you know, you expect to get some, you know, decent sales uh, into summer, people moving, jobs, things like that. So uh, hopefully that will uh, be a continued trend. Um, another big uh, news that came out, and I'm sure we're going to see uh, this have a nice little impact over on our euro, um, a very unexpected impact. So I really saw the euro heading lower today. But uh, why did it start moving back up? So, well, you had the home sales and everything else. So that, of course, you know, helped out on that. Big thing is, uh, news came out that the truck has accepted another of the eight and a half billion dollars, um, eight and a half billion euros to nine and a half billion euros um, in Greek cuts. So they're getting closer to working out their deal with the Troika, and um, they're going to actually be having the full details coming out here next week. But that's that's big news for them. So of course that's strong for the euro. What's bad for the euro? Uh, on the twenty sixth, a bunch of the unions are planning on striking in Greece. Um, when the parliaments go to vote. 
So uh, the unions, of course, against the welfare cut, pension cuts, extended work weeks, etc. And uh, watch out, it's going to be happening here too. Man, <laughs> they keep on this spending. Sooner or later, you got to cut. So um, we're you know we're seeing a little, down a little window path, and hopefully our country figures it out before we get there. But uh, they're having to cut like you know drastically and fast versus putting in a nice slow plan um, of cutting down expenses. So they're having to cut like crazy, and there will be strikes in Europe. You're going to be hearing about them on the 26th in Greece when the big unions go on strike in um, response to the voting that's going to be taking place um, regarding the uh, spending cuts. So keep that one in your bag. Keep be aware that that's going to affect obviously all the indices. It's going to be affecting the currencies with the dollar. So uh, that will be. A big, big thing, and then of course you know we got ongoing things like China and stuff like that that are you know always coming in and out of the news that we need to keep our eye on. But those are the ones, those are the events you know that are happening, and when you know they're happening, then you can be prepared for them. You can position yourself for them. You can tighten stops, uh, you know, different things like that. And then uh, tonight we got the uh, Spanish ten-year bond auction coming out. So with that ten-year bond auction, um, we'll see. You know, I mean, if it keeps ticking up. They're, they, you know, oh, I know the the ECB said they would buy bonds if, if, if being the key word, if they agree to all the austerity measures, which they've already said they're not going to. So they're not going to accept it, and they're not going to request it, and they're not going to get it. And so we see those Spanish ten-year bonds keep ticking up. Um, tonight, that could have a major negative impact on the euro. So uh, just uh, keep that one in mind as well. That's going to have an impact. So even though we got a little bit of a relief rally on some of the news that came out with the Troika, still got that Spanish 10-year bond auction. Um, you know, but don't worry because, uh, you know, there'll be uh, more announcements coming out from somebody to try to turn it around and spin it and make it good. And uh, we're going to have, of course, a whole bunch of reports coming out of France. So that'll be interesting to see. A lot of, a lot of European action going on um, coming up. So we got the French PMI. Manufacturing PMI, flash services PMI. We got the German flash manufacturing PMI and um, flash services PMI. And the Euro overall manufacturing PMI and services PMI. So um, it's a very, it's basically a survey. They surveyed 3,000 managers. They asked them about things like business conditions, employment, production, orders, you know, deliveries, inventories, things like that. And so those are going to be uh, some pretty important numbers because there's so many of them coming out in a row. And um, a lot of them are coming up right near the same time. And looking on over, um, so we got all those PMI reports coming out. Then you got the Spanish 10-year bond auction coming out. Um, and then, of course, shortly after that, we're then going to have the unemployment claims coming out tomorrow morning. So we ought to get a little bit of market action tomorrow. And depending upon how those bond auctions go and those European PMI reports go, um, then that'll be the you know the setup for the overnight. And then at the unemployment claims confirm or you know like if those are good and the unemployment claims are good i'll get a bit of a rally if they're bad and the unemployment claims are bad then we ought to see a pretty uh, decent down day tomorrow and friday historically very 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 negative day so we'll talk about the seasonality of that here um, in one of our next segments coming up and wanted to uh, remind you that uh you know we do have an event coming up that you can register for and if you want to register for that just hop over to tfn.com now it is going to be live in person it's not going to be a webinar event it's going to be a live in-person event. And so click right here on tfn.com on free live workshop. And I know we already have quite a few people booked for that. And um, so it's filling up. There's a little bit of room left. Grab your spot before it is full. Um, please make sure that if you do register, you are going to be able to attend because we don't want to have um, somebody not be able to attend because there's some empty seats because we had them um, saved. Um, and uh, the event, fortunately, is free because Nadex is sponsoring it. But it's going to be full of value. Um, we're going to be giving away a lot of prizes, and uh, we're going to be having just a, a good time talking about Nadex. We're going to be talking about identifying trend setups. We're going to be talking about setting up trades. We're going to go into uh, the diagnostic trading formula, looking at seasonality, fundamentals, statistics, all that, you know, putting them all together. And uh, we're going to go into risk and money management. So, I mean, really just a power pack, three and a half hour trading session or training session on trading. Um, you can have Dan Cook from Nadex, you can have Tom O'Brien, you can have me. And we're going to be putting all of that together for you. And that's going to be at the Grand Hyatt. And um, what are some of the giveaways? We're going to have some fun prizes there. So, you know, we like to, you know, just make things fun. We're going to give away some half-ounce silver bars. We're going to give away some one-ounce silver bars. We're going to be giving away a copy of Tom's book, The Art of Timing the Trade, The Ultimate Trading Mastery System. 
And we're also going to be uh, giving away a subscription to the Gold Report. And we're going to be giving away some subscriptions to Market Insights. So, and subscriptions to our, um, the Art of Timing the Trade. So we're going to have so much that we're going to want to give away just for fun. And um, got to be present to win, of course. So make sure you're there. Three and a half hours, Tampa. And coming up right here at the end of the month, September 29th, Saturday morning. What else are you doing on Saturday morning? Might as well get prepared and learn how to limit your risk and maximize your leverage and set up your trades on a Saturday morning in Tampa. What a better way to what a better way to spend a Saturday morning for a trader. It'd be a, it'd be a good fun time, and you'll still have the rest of the day to go out and have fun. So, um, anyways, if you uh, got any questions, of course, just let us know. But hop on there, register. That is free. And, uh, you know, listen to all our archives or everything else on TFNN.com. You can listen to us live as well and on uh, Tiger TV at TFNN.com. And if you have any questions, you can always call in at 1-877-927-6648. Now, if you're curious about this Nadex thing, you've been hearing about it, you've been thinking about it, you haven't acted. All right, it's time to check it out. They have two products, okay? They have binaries and they have what they call bull spreads, I call them box spreads because they're not bullish unless you buy them. And uh, so they're, you know, I call bull bear box spreads. If you buy them, they're bullish. They're, you know, if you sell them, they're bearish. They're not calls. They're not puts. They're not credit spreads. They're not debit spreads. They're not vertical, diagonals, and horizontals. They're a totally different product. And once they get right to that price where you buy the spread at, I mean, you're looking at a one-to-one -one delta. You're not being cluttered down with all the different Greeks all over you where you're trying to figure out Delta, Theta, Gamma, Vega, Rho, you know, they're one-day options. So one-day options have a mass, which you could say Gamma effect, puts everything in a Delta of one very fast. Time decay obviously not being a massive issue simply because of the fact that you have one day or less until expiration. And you're able to go in and trade just like you're trading the underlying market, but you get to chill out a little bit. Why? Because you can't get stopped out. So you can buy, say, a Euro-dollar spread, and get a dollar for every pit move, just like you would on a mini lot, okay? Or you can go in and buy, say, five um, U.S. 500 spreads and get 50 bucks on a one-point move, just like you sort of would on the S&P 500 E-mini futures. But if it goes against you, you're still in the trade, but your risk is capped. It can't get any bigger. No matter how far it goes against you, you still get to be in the trade without increasing your risk. And then when it moves in your direction, if it moves in your direction, you still have time to be right and make money on the trade. And you don't have to play those middle games with yourself anymore where you're like, well, do I get in? Okay, if I get in, where do I set my stop? Now, when I set my stop, what happens if it gets hit? Do I get in again? Do I go the opposite direction? Do I sit on my hands? Oh, my gosh, it's ticking against me. What should I do? Okay, this is the third time it's happened. Should I get in again? Oh, I'm not going to. Wow, I missed out. It moved really far. Maybe I should just use a stop. And, I mean, you just go through that, that time and time and time again. So, to get rid of those games, trade on Nadex. Get in, place your trade, Time is your risk is capped, and you got time until the end of the day to be right. And um, we'll go over that more, but hop on over there at tfnn.com, click on the Nadex banner, click on Create Account, and you can fill out an account and be uh, funded in less than five minutes or get a demo account for free in less than 15 seconds. Give me a call here at tfnn.com if you have any questions. Stay right there. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right. Welcome on back here to the show. And uh, we left off there talking about how what you want to do is you want to make sure you do sign up and check out the Nadex account, see exactly how that works. Especially have that before if you come to the Tampa show. Either way, um, you want to hop in there, you'll be able to follow along, call in, ask questions, send me an email, dmartin at tfnn.com. Be happy to help answer any questions that you have. I do get questions regularly, and I uh, love to respond and help you out. So uh, there's you know just a lot of good ways that you can trade these products. There's different ways to take advantage of them. And it just depends on whether you're bullish, bearish, uh, neutral, whether you you know have a bias. Um, maybe you think it's going to stay in a range. Or maybe you think it's gonna, you know, maybe go up a little, stay flat, or go down. So there's all different ways that you can trade these products. Sort of like if you're looking at, you know, your traditional options, you can do that as well. You can go in and, you know, you can combine the different trades together to come up with different ways to trade them. You can do that with Nadex, but uh, you get a lot of advantages. Also, they're built for the retail trader, meaning that you can go in and um, you can do very small position sizes if you want to, or you can do very large position sizes if you want to. You can have a trade, you put on for 5 bucks, or you can put on a trade for $5,000. So it really depends upon how big you like to trade, but the nice thing is you actually can trade with a very small account. It's actually only $100 to open an account at a minimum, um, but you can actually open an account and get full access to everything that they have to offer. And to open that account, you just uh, click on the Start button right there at tfnn.com, go to Nadex, and then at the top, click on Create Account, and then you'll be able to hop on and click start. And uh, from you know clicking start to funding your account can be done in literally as little as five minutes. And you can um, check it out, see exactly how it works. 
and get access to I said the binaries and the spreads. And of course, I'm teaching you how to trade them on here, and you know, bringing more education to you every single day. Um, you also have access to the binaries, and there's binaries in a lot of different places. But you want to make sure that you do uh, choose somebody like Nadex because there's a lot of advantages with them. Um, one of those is, of course, they're in the U.S. <laughs> uh, the other one is your money is held in a bank account in the U.S. They're registered with the CFTC, so they're regulated here in the U.S. Um, they base their settlements on the – there's a lot of different uh, things, but one of the things they actually base their settlements on an average of the last, like, 25 trades. They take out the top five, bottom five, and they average the middle 15. So that way you get a fair average price and not like an erroneous settlement. A lot of the other binary companies out there – by the way, Nadex is the only place you can trade the box spreads – but the binary companies out there, they don't have that ability. What they do is they take the last trade, and if it's just a random, weird, wild trade, tough. Okay? Um, another thing they'll do is they'll take the index, like the SPX, which you can't even trade, and they'll base the settlement price on that instead of the futures contract. So you can have massive gaps, which completely can kill your ability to have an accurate settlement price. So with Nadex, again, you get that average price on the futures, you know, future commodities, future indices, or on the Forex spot market itself. And uh, the way they balance that out works very, very well for you in your favor um, in the sense of doing it in a way that's fair and balanced. They also have other features like they let you have a demo account before you fund an account. Most of the brokers out there, um, and, and Nadex isn't a broker, they're an exchange, so they're higher than a broker. But most of the over-the-counter, basically you call them bucket shops on binaries, they make you fund an account before they give you a demo. Um, another advantage, they got the, uh, the payouts. You can make 1,900% on a trade. You can put up 5 bucks, make 95 bucks, and... Uh, is it possible? Yes, I've done it. Yes, recently. So, um, yes, you can go in and you can have very high returns. On the ones over there, you can only make 70%. And those 70%, you know, maybe 80, maybe 90%, they quote 90% a lot of times. I Usually you see between 70 and 80%. That sounds really good because you're like, wow, 70, 80% return on investment. Hold on. 70, 80% return on risk also. All right, so you're risking 100. So it's like saying, hey, buy this stock. It's either going to be 170 or it's going to be zero tomorrow. Do you want it? Well, uh, no. <laughs> so if I did that every day, I, you know, it had to be right like 59 out of 100 times, okay, 59% of the time to even break even on the trade. So whereas with Nadex, you can do 50-50, you can do, you know, 595. So you can go in and you can do one-to-one -one risk reward or you can do a whole lot better than that depending upon what trades you want to do. And uh, a lot of the companies out there, they'll have uh, these big bonuses, they call them. And that you can take advantage of, and you've got to watch out for those bonuses. Uh, they can be good. So it depends on what the terms and conditions are, but sometimes they'll make you trade 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times your account balance before they give you the bonus. So if you go in and you put 10 grand in, you got to trade 50 times that amount, and that means you have to have a half a million dollars in trades uh, before you actually can have your bonus as withdrawable. Well, what does that mean, as withdrawable? That means if you put in 10 grand and they give you 5 grand and you lose 10 grand, then you've lost everything, they don't give you the bonus. Some of them won't let you withdraw anything if you don't go in and actually do the bonus. So um, you definitely want to be checking that out and uh, figuring out you know what you want to do. But definitely uh, check out Nadex. There's a lot of advantages. You can click the start button right there. You can also go in. Um, another huge, huge advantage is you can get in and you can get out before expiration on Nadex. Whereas traditional binaries overseas that aren't regulated, you get in and you're stuck. You're, they're locked in until expiration. So you can get in, take some profits, limit your losses on Nadex. Click and open a demo account, and you'll be able to hop right on in 15 seconds and uh, be able to check it out. All right, we'll be uh, right back after this commercial break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
you've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome back to the show here. Um, and we are looking at several different things, but one of them is I was going over the seasonality that's coming up. And uh, we got a few different things going on. So I wanted to review some of that with you just to give you some ideas on uh, how to you know plan some trades and diagnostic trading. We're always looking at the diagnostic areas. So we're looking at uh, different things like what do you want to look at as far as the seasonality, the fundamentals, the statistics, how that, statistics, <laughs> and the technicals? And so we talked about some fundamentals this morning. A lot of times we go into statistics. I wanted to do a little bit of seasonality wrap for you here. And um, what we got going on is we have, of course, they had the, uh, the big meetings and everything else that have been taking place. But now, what should we be looking at on the seasonality that a lot of that stuff's out? And how has the market actually, you know, responded? So... What we can do is we can look at, you know, like today has historically actually been a down day uh, most of the part on uh, like the Dow Jones and uh, Russell 2000. Right now it looks like they're up a little bit, and um, so you know, they may continue. We'll see how that ends up right there. Um, and then looking over at uh, Thursday, um, not really, you know, much there. Usually the NASDAQ is the best performer um, historically on Thursdays, but on Friday we're going to have a triple witching. And... Um, out of let's see here we got the we got seven straight up um, triple witching September uh, days here and that's what's coming up uh, that's when all the, the futures and the options indexes all the options uh, and the stocks all those come together and um, but not all of them but when three of the different uh, options come together for um, expiration and settlement 
And that is going to come up again this Friday. And again, seven out of um, the last nine have been up. Eight out of the last nine have been up. And seven straight out of the last nine. And eight out of the last nine total have actually been positive. So keep that, uh, you know, be aware of that, just that number there. And then looking at next week, um, it usually is uh, down. So like 16 out of the last, you know, 20, um, 20 cup, basically, I think 21 um, records here on triple witching. The uh, Dow's actually been down along with the other markets. And so the whole week usually has a bearish uh, sentiment to it. And so, you know, just keep that one in mind. And then, of course, we got the the Troika deal coming out. We have a big thing is we have, of course, the Greek strikes that are going to be coming out next week. So that could have some impact. Um, and the other big thing that has a lot to do with it is there's a weakness because of quarter three, the institutional um, portfolios like the mutual funds and everything, they're doing a lot of restructuring. And so that can have a big impact at the end of September. So be aware of that seasonal cycle. That's, that's sort of what causes it. It's not the triple witching that causes it. It's the quarter three portfolio restructuring usually leads to weakness in the end of September itself. So uh, keep that one in mind as you're looking at your trades, you're doing your setup. It doesn't mean go short. What it means is keep in mind the seasonality, and there's actually something behind the seasonality. And that's not just seasonality because it happened to last 19 out of the last 20, but the Q3 restructuring that happens can definitely have a, a big impact on the market. And sometimes as that restructuring gets a little too um, big, it leads into a crash that we see in October. That's usually when we see the crashes. So it's sort of known as the Jeeks month, even though it's actually been positive more than not. Uh, when the crashes happen, they usually happen in October after the portfolio restructuring takes place in September. So we got a couple weeks left here, and then uh, we'll be going into October. If nothing blows up in the meantime, then we could start seeing a little bit of a move up. We sort of saw the cycle back with QE2. If you look back when Bat Bernanke uh, announced QE2 in November, we saw the market go flat for a couple weeks, and then it went ahead and went on to a rally into the end of the year. Um, another part of that is, you know, out of the forty billion or so we're spending, about only twenty-one billion, I think, is going to be, which only twenty-one, right? Twenty-one billion um, will be spent in September. Then it's going to go full-fledged into the forty billion in October. So a lot more of that money is going to start being pumped in to mortgage-backed securities, not into the monetary supply, but into mortgage-backed securities. But that'll get people excited. Um, the money's going to be, you know, ramping up. And the other thing we're going to have, of course, going into October is we'll be having um, quarter three earnings announcements will be coming out. So between QE3 and restructuring being over and then quarter three earnings announcements, then we ought to start seeing a move up here at the beginning of October, um, absent any major surprises like Spanish bond yields going to 10% or something like that. So uh, that's some seasonality for you. You know, you got to have the seasonality. You need to be aware of those cycles. Uh, sometimes you can get so bogged down in one chart that you forget about the other things that are going on. Again, you don't make your decisions based on any of the aspects of diagnostic trading. You don't make it based on technical seasonal, fundamental, statistical. What you do is you go, based on those things, how are orders likely to be placed? And especially when I can see, you know, the seasonality lining up with the technical, lining up with the deviation, you know, lining up with, you know, fundamental news reports. Now I go, hey, there's a lot of orders to be placed. So I'm, I'm trying to get one step ahead and go, how would I trade if I was a seasonal trader or a fundamental trader or, you know, something like that. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but you want to you want to be able to look at how are other traders thinking if they believe in technicals, fundamentals, seasonals, and statistics. And it's not that those things are bad to believe in. They, just, they don't drive the market themselves. But if enough people look at them, um, then they become more and more powerful. And a lot of them are really good because they're looking at you know order flow. They're looking at, hey, here's the ebb and flow of the market and how the orders move. And when it comes right down to it, that's all that matters is orders. So where are the orders? The market goes to where the orders exist. And when there's very few orders market doesn't move a whole lot. So if there's not a lot of sell orders, the market's going to move higher and higher and higher, even on light volume, because there's not a lot of sell orders built in. And um, so we got a, you know, got a lot of things going on. We're going to have to watch it out and see uh, what we can see. So one of the other things we have to look at is deviation levels. And so I want to go over some of those with you and just talk about the deviations and do a wrap up on that for the last bit of our upcoming segment here. So that way uh, you can have an idea on just, you know, moves that have happened, will happen, are happening, and what to expect for the rest of the day. And uh, so let me go ahead and I will open up the deviation levels and we will wrap up with that. So right here over on deviations, I'm going to pull it up and we're going to be looking at the major levels. And uh, when I go to deviation levels, I'm not talking about your standard deviation that's looking at historical movement. I'm talking about 
implied deviation, using the implied volatility of the underlying options of that market to see what is the, what is the options market? What does the market say as far as how far the market can move today? And um, that is what's going to help us out with that. So let's go ahead and check it out. We'll start off, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to just run down the markets. Of course, the big one being um, crude has been the big mover on the day. And so on crude oil over here, you know, we can uh, pull that up. Uh, I actually might start with that one because it's been such a massive, massive drop. And uh, there was a huge drop earlier in the week. On Monday, we had another drop today. This keeps moving down. They're dumping that oil out. Um, it's not peace in the Middle East. Um, they're dumping that oil like crazy. Obama's pulling out all the stops. Between uh, QE being afraid of that causing inflation on the energy, um, they've opened up the oil reserves. Why? Well, because there's been some hurricanes and... You know, um, it's been expensive, so we need to make it cheaper because I'm trying to get elected in two more months. So that's basically what's going on right there. And, uh, you know, it's just it's pretty crazy, but uh, it's been falling like crazy. There's been a lot of money to be made in uh, following these big moves over in oil. And let me see, pull up a couple more things for you. What are, what are the um, deviations built into oil even after these big moves? We're done at 91.77. Um, that actually is not even a two deviation move. That's how much the um, implied volatility has said the market will move. So 93.54 was a one deviation move. It moved down to 91.47 would be um, the second deviation move. It got pretty close. So we only got we were only eight cents off of a second deviation move, which is probably my guess as far as we're going to be taking it. So uh, they're building in that implied volatility. Those you know those options in there. And so we may have hit the bottom of oil for the day. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I got a request that looks like to check out a couple other products over in the den. So I'll be pulling those up as well. Let me see what I can do for you. And I'll go ahead and put in, I got a request on Apple. So uh, between Apple and the Fed, the market's just going to keep rising, right? So <laughs> the app, let's see here. Let's uh, check out Apple, see what it's doing. It's been pretty flat, obviously, today, sort of up and down moves. Let's see. So the request over in the Tigers Den is let's check out Apple and just uh, check out the rest of the day. Well, uh, as far as up and down moves, obviously we're staying inside the levels. 707.5 is a half deviation move on Apple and uh, down to 696.37. Obviously, it's not moving anywhere. I, I really wouldn't be trying to do much with Apple right now. So as far as like just intraday trading, it's just uh, it's very quiet. We're near the end of the day. And uh, just looking at the daily bars over here, we'll back out a little bit further. But, I mean, hourly right there, you can see just a little bit of a move up. And um, we'll see. I mean, if it breaks that low, then that would be an issue. But it will probably, you know, it may push up and do another high again. We'll see. We hit another high yet again today on Apple. But you notice it hit that and it just fell right back down. So it was there wasn't a whole lot of commitment in it. And if uh, we back up a little bit further, and of course I like Apple. Everybody likes Apple. But um, all in all, you know, hasn't really been the most positive uh, day for it, except for breaking that new high. So I think a little bit of that excitement might be wearing off, and um, you know, it's it's flat. That's really all I got to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, not a lot of analysis there for intraday trading. But as far as how far could it go, then yeah, we could look at you know definitely the uh, build-in move, but uh, it could move up you know quite a bit. But right now, there's just not a lot to say about Apple for the day. Uh, it's probably just going to stay within that range of 707.43 down to, you know, 696.39. And uh, I don't even know if it's going to get that well, honestly. So a uh, quick wrap on Apple there for you. Hopping on over and checking out a few of the other markets on uh, S&P. You know, got a pretty flat movement on this side. Looking at the S&P, says it ought to go up to about 14.59. And it went to 14.59. Um, and then we got to move down to 1446. Hadn't quite hit that yet. So basically hit its half deviation. It's staying at flat days. You're looking at half deviation levels. And uh, hopping over on Russell. And let's see what we got there. High on Russell we should be expecting is 858. And we got 857. And on the low side on the Russell, low we should be expecting is 848.77. Didn't quite hit that. That was pretty close to uh, the low yesterday as well. And then hopping on over, we got a uh, Russell there. Let's check out the NASDAQ and checking out our tech stocks with the support, of course, they got early this morning from Apple. And then they, you know, it's been doing pretty good overall for the day. The high we're expecting on the NASDAQ on a half deviation day 
is uh, 2863. And uh, we did get a 2862.75. So, uh, you know, even right there, we got 28, yeah, 62.75. So, got pretty close to that half deviation move, and it's starting to pull back down. Again, it's not a big uh, volatile day. The, the action happened in the morning, and it just wore off. So, unless we get another rally past that, that's pretty much our cap on the day there. And then looking on over uh, how far should we expect it to go down, down to uh, 2836.75. So it's got quite a bit of room to move if it is going to move all the way back down. Don't really see anything big and negative at this moment to uh, drive that, though. And then uh, looking over here, what do we got on the Dow? On the Dow, looking on up, we got to move up to 13552 as the half deviation move. We got a 13557 overnight. We got a 13. 556, so literally just a couple uh, ticks off, you know, three, four ticks off of that. And um, so it basically hit that half deviation, and you can see every time it hit it, here's the 52 mark, okay? It hits it, boom, falls down, hits it, boom, falls down, hits it, falls down, hits it, falls down, hits it, falls down, hits it, falls down over and over again. So really serving as a definite, you could say, resistance level. And that's what the deviation levels are for, is to show you resistance or take profit zones. So if you're long, you'd be in take, you basically would have been tightening your profit when it hit that 1352 and been knocked out. And if you want to go long again, again, you'd tighten up your stops when it came up here and hit it again. And you'd have knocked out. You would have got a, a great move. Um, looking over on a Copper with uh, the housing announcements and stuff today. Again, that's not new homes, or not uh, it's existing homes, not new homes. So not as powerful, but still powerful enough. And Copper did make a pretty good move. Almost got up to its uh, one deviation level, which would be 3.845. Got to 3.8395. So literally just a couple ticks off of that. And, uh, but definitely got some nice moves. But as soon as it got right about that deviation level, when it got past the 0 0.7, which is 828, then it just wore off and fell on back down. So now we got a couple other things going on. We got our gold contracts. And gold had a little bit of an up rally, but uh, let it go. It wasn't a massive move. And on gold, we were expecting to move up to about 1780, 1781. And it got to 1781.8 overnight, and this fell on back down. The down move on the downside, 1761.8. It uh, had this big this spike. So I'm sure it knocked some people out pretty hard if they were uh, trading that early right there after the uh, announcement. Whenever the uh, home sales reports came out, it really had a big, big move on it. And uh, that would have been a wild ride. That's that's the reasons why you trade Nadex right there. Okay. <laughs> and then um, looking over on the uh, silver contracts. So silver, uh, one of the more quieter ones here, but we're going to check it out anyway. And at 35.10 was the high expectation. We got a 35.02, so pretty close. And on the downside, on silver, looking down to 34.34. And we got down to 34.32. So right on the money on the up and down on that nice flat half deviation day across the board. What about natural gas? It has been a mover and a shaker lately, I'll tell you. Look at natural gas moving on up. We got a move up. Let's see here. How high did we go? Tonight, we went all the way up, actually early this morning, we went on up to 2.856, and uh, it's like 2.859 was a one deviation move. So literally just a few little, I mean like a tick basically off of the high there, one deviation move, and fell right on back down. And uh, that wraps up our energies, and that wraps up our indices, and that wraps up our metals. We'll uh, look at some forex pairs, and we'll look at some ags, and we come right back to wrap it up for the day. Stay right there. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this 
prices and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We're going to wrap up the statistical side of the trades. And uh, we are going to go in and look at the ags. We have some big moves on the ags today. So uh, corn did a nice little pop up right there this morning. And on uh, corn, we uh, had a high today so far, seven fifty nine point thirty one. And uh, checking that out, that's actually a massive move. That's actually broke the one deviation level, which was sitting right down here. So uh, big, big pop on corn. Uh, some good opportunities there. You can trade corn at Nadex also. Corn is a scary contract to trade as a future contract. Hop in there and just try. You'll see what I mean. It can move four points in a second. So um, definitely a nice way to trade that and uh, you know be calm at the same time. Going over and checking out the soybean market and uh, what's going on in the soybeans. So uh, staple food, it uh, seems like, here lately. And that's moving on. I've had a high of 1675. And looking over at soybeans, uh, that is a move past the one deviation level. So getting some big... Big moves in the ags. They just continue to happen day after day. 
with the drought, the food shortage, the growing population, um, everything that's happened, it's just uh, you know not going to get better. And then you inflate food on top of that with QE3. So, anyways, uh, looking at some other things, looking over at Aussie dollar on the Aussie dollar side of things. Um, we want to see, you know, how far has it moved? It's moved up onto 1.0496. We had a deviation level, a half deviation level, 1.0486. So really, uh, right on the deviation, just chilling right out like all the other ones. We got to see this across most of the currency pairs. And uh, let's see here. Let's check out the euro. Let's see how it's stacked up on this side. So on the euro, what we got? We got to move up to, let's see, we've got a high overnight, 13084 or so. And uh, so checking that out on the high side, 13084 to the pip, half deviation move. What about on the down move? On the down move, we got to move down to 1.3008. Let's check that out. How low did we go? 1.2992. So um, on that side, basically broke it by uh, 16 pips or so. So basically right here. And then just broke down a little bit and then turned right back around, moved on back up. So some great half deviation swing trade setting up right there. And uh, looking over at the pound dollar, on the pound dollar, what do we got going on? Well, we can see several things, but uh, one of the things on the pound dollar is a move up to 1.6276. Let's see how high did it go, 1.6270. Six picks off of that half deviation move and uh, set it for a perfect reversal trade. Obviously, an ideal uh, take profit level right around there as the weakness started to kick in. And then on the downside, it moved down to 1.6209. And they released their meeting minutes last night, so that caused a lot of extra volatility on their side. And a 1.6196 would have been a 0.7 deviation. So it sort of basically hit the half deviation, did one more little push, and then pulled on back up. And uh, we'll wrap up a couple more currency pairs for you. And that will wrap us up on the deviations for the day. Looking over at the U.S. dollar franc trade, we got U.S. dollar franc hitting a high up here at 0.9306. And a half deviation at 0.9311. And so just about like right at the half deviation mark. And on the way down, really, uh, we got to move down to a low of the overnight of 0.9257. And uh, that would have been a move right down to 0.9256. So literally one tick off of the low half deviation mark. So you can see, I mean, the deviation level is just really, really helping contain things. And then what about the yen pair? So with all those announcements that came out last night, we ought to be looking for probably a one deviation move. Let's see what we got. It moved up to 79.21, a one deviation move on that, 79.26. So literally just shy, five ticks shy of a one deviation move. And then a big retracement on the way back down, down to 78.24, which is just a little bit, about 10 ticks lower than a one deviation move on the way down. So which would be 78.36. So we're sitting right at that. It looks like it might want to break lower on that. So anyways, y'all have a great day, and uh, market's pretty flat for the day and all. Just make sure you trade it like it's a flat market, and uh, take advantage of it accordingly. Y'all have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.